Hello everyone, here is Dr. Venaduci, and today we will start studying the skeletal system. As you can expect, when we study the skeletal system, we study the skeleton. Now, what do we see in a skeleton? We see lots of bones. But besides that, we see that we have places where we have bones joining together. And those places we call joints. And if we zoom in in a joint, you will see that we find cartilage and ligaments. So when we study the skeletal system, we study bones as well as cartilage and ligaments. Now, in this lecture, we will focus mostly in bones. And before we go deep into bones, I have a question for you. When I say the word bone, what comes to your mind? What comes to my mind is the image of a bone. For example, it could be an image of the humerus bone, the clavicle bone, the femur bone, the image of a bone. Now, if we go and we look into one of these bones that we are seeing here, you would see that we find the cells that are making up the bone. We see that we find adipose cells, we find blood vessels, and so on. And when we have this arrangement of different tissues, do you remember what forms when different tissues get together in a specific arrangement? That forms an organ, right? And with that being said, you need to keep in mind that we have the bone organ and we have the bone tissue. And the bone organ has bone tissue in it. So for us to be able to look at the organ, we will study what makes up the bone tissue. In making up the bone tissue, we have four different types of cells. We have osteoprogenitor cells. And look at this, the root osteo means bone. You know the word osteoporosis is when we have porous in a bone, osteo. So osteo means bone. And pro means before. And genitor is something that generates. So the osteoprogenitor cells are the cells that will generate the cells that will make bone, right? So the four cells are the osteoprogenitor cells. In the osteoprogenitor cells, they will generate, they will become, they will differentiate into osteoblasts. And the osteoblasts are born to build bone. And what happens is that these osteoblasts, which are born to build bone, they will secrete extracellular matrix. And they will suck up minerals like calcium minerals and phosphate minerals from the blood and will deposit these minerals in this extracellular matrix. So we have these osteoblasts. Imagine this is an osteoblast. And then this beautiful osteoblast secretes the extracellular matrix, extra outside cellular cell, so the extracellular matrix outside the cell, and deposits in this extracellular matrix the minerals, right? So we have these minerals being deposited in the extracellular matrix. And that's why we say that the osteoblasts are responsible for bone deposition because they deposit minerals in the extracellular matrix. Then what happens is that they deposit these minerals there in the extracellular matrix that they're producing and they become trapped in it. And when they're trapped, they're stuck. And when that happens, they become, they mature to osteo sites. The word sites means cells, and they are the main cells in the bone tissue. Now, I said that the osteoblasts, they deposit minerals in this extracellular matrix, minerals such as calcium. What happens is that we need to keep the levels of calcium in our blood within homeostatic levels. One of the reasons is because calcium is very important in blood coagulation. So for us to have the coagulation cascade, we need to have a specific amount of calcium in the blood. If not, we will be bleeding to death. Now, this calcium in the bloodstream is sucked up out of the bloodstream and dumped into this extracellular matrix right here, and that forms the bone. Now, if we have little calcium in the bloodstream, we need to find a way to increase the amount of calcium in the bloodstream. And one of the ways this happens is by removing this calcium 
that was deposited in the bone, out of the bone tissue, and dumping it back in the bloodstream. And the cell that crushes up the bone and dumps the calcium back into the bloodstream is named osteoclasts. So the osteoclasts, they crush the bone and they put the calcium back into the bloodstream. And when the osteoclasts crush the bone, they reshape the bone because you're literally destroying the bone to put the calcium back in the bloodstream. And this action of reshaping the bone because the osteoclasts are crushing it is called bone resorption. So bone resorption is the action of reshaping the bone. And when you reshape, you crush it up so you can put calcium back in the bloodstream. Osteoclasts do not derive from osteoprogenitor cells. Osteoclasts arise from the fusion of several monocytes. And a monocyte is a type of white blood cell. So when we have several monocytes getting together, they form an osteoclast. Now, I told you that osteoprogenitor cells, they divide and differentiate into osteoblasts. And then that the osteoblast gets stuck within the extracellular matrix and become the osteocytes. Now, the question is, where are these osteoprogenitor cells coming from? And they come from the embryonic skeleton.